Hello again. My aim for this one is to show you how you can make your design more accessible to animation without using bones, weights or nodes. The idea was nicked, uh, I mean inspired by a great rigging script for After Effects called Joysticks and Sliders. With a model, we'll rig it with a single joystick like controller and then add accessories in After Effects. Time to get started. We'll begin by taking a look at the model. Here's our character, designed in Affinity Designer and bought in via OD Vector Importer. The link is in the description. It's basically flat planes with a bit of extrusion and bevels just to round out some of the edges. Each element that I want control over is separated to its own layer. And it's also worth pointing out that the pivot point for each layer is at 0, 0, 0. You don't have to do it like that. You could move your pivot to wherever you want. It's just if something goes wrong in layout, it's easy to reset by zeroing out the position. That's enough about the model. Time to get rigging. We're ready for rigging and we're going to start off by creating a few nulls. Let's create our first null and we'll call it rig. This will be our pivot for a bit of neck rotation. So we'll move that down a little bit and to the back. Now what we'll do is we'll pair in all our objects to that rig. Press one on the keyboard so we're now in back view and create a new null. We'll call this one base. We'll give this an object shape in this case a box that is one meter in scale. Your scale may vary depending on the size of your object. So we'll okay that and then we'll also create another null and call this one control. We'll also give that a shape in this case Let's go for a ring and a Z. It's a little bit of guesswork at this point. It'd be nice if it auto updated. <laughs> anyway, uh, point one. So that's the control. What we're going to do is we're going to firstly parent the control to the base, move this base to the side, and lock the base null. So now, whenever we try and choose something, that base object is excluded. Now, on this control, M for motion options, we're going to add some limits. This box is one meter in diameter, so we need minus 0.5 to 0.5. And we're gonna limit the Y as well as the same value. So now we have a nice little joystick within a container. On with the rigging, which is surprisingly straightforward. I'm gonna lock the rig so I don't accidentally select that for this next step. The joystick control is selected. Let's hop over to the setup tab and we will select this assignments store selected option. Press on that, not a lot happens. However, let's right mouse click and select all our head elements. So all of these are selected. We'll now jump to assign, same as position. Now you'll see everything somewhat unhelpfully jumps up there. There's a couple of fixes to this. Firstly, untick world. Now we've shifted to another position. We wanna use compensate in this mode, but there's one more step to do. If we select our joystick and move it to the right, because we're in compensate mode, the head moves in the opposite direction. To follow the direction of the joystick, we wanna multiply it by minus one on the X and the Y. So now when we select our joystick, our head is moving as the joystick does. Move the joystick to the left and select all our layers. This compensate figure here of 100% is basically a blend value between the joystick and the original position of each of the head objects. So if we knock that down to zero, the control will have no influence. So what we're basically gonna do is use this figure to force a perspective. Let's start on the eyes first. I've color coded them here for ease of use because I keep selecting the ears by mistake. The joystick is currently having 0% influence. So we'll take the eyes up to about 50%. percent we will take the head. The head obviously is a little bit further back, so we want it to move, but probably not quite as much. And we'll do a similar sort of thing with the lips. Now the hair object is probably traveling the most as it closest to us. So let's try 60%. The hair at the back should probably go in the opposite direction, so let's add a minus number to our percentage. Probably something similar for the hair bunch. So again, let's just knock that back. That's looking pretty good on the X. Let's do something similar for the Y. It's moving quite nicely on the Y, but there's a few tweaks we can make. 
Now the 50% figure here is already set for the X, so we don't want to be tampering with that. But what we can do is we have a multiplier down here that can help us out. So let's say we want to move the eyes a little bit further up the head. Our hair at the front could also move a little further to force that perspective a little more. So I'm quite happy with that, but there is one more step we can do to push the perspective, and that is with the rotation of the whole head. Let's go back and select our rig. And under motion options for the rig null, under rotation, we will select our joystick or the control null as it's called. By default, it's looking at the heading and the pitch of our joystick control null here. But we can point it to the X and the Y instead, and we just simply do that down here. See the follow H, we want the follow the X. And for the pitch, where it says follow the pitch, we want it to follow the Y. So now grabbing our controller. So similar to the last time, we want to multiply the heading by a minus figure. But it looks like the pitch is actually okay, so we don't need to change anything there. But if it's moving just a little bit too much for you, turn down the interpolate value. Let's move our controller all the way to the left. Now you'll see our eyes are moving quite linear in that they are the same distance apart there as they are there. Now since we're forcing perspective, we'd expect these eyes on this side to be slightly further in and the same on the opposite side. And it's a handy little feature to do this. Select the left eye. Now we're dealing with the X here and next to the follow, there's a texture button. So let's select that. Layer type, we will choose a gradient, and from the input parameter, we will use the follow X parameter. Now you'll notice the eye's gone a little bit wonky. We'll make the key alpha of zero. Now we know this null is going from minus 0.5 to 0.5, so let's add a couple of keys at those points. At minus 0.5, we're happy with this position. So select the key at 0.5, which is there, which is here. <laughs> now the blend mode we want to add to this, because the alpha is set to zero, it's currently having no effect, but we want to add slightly to this position. So we'll take the alpha and we'll just push it up a little bit. We don't want to go too far, about 30% I think looks okay. And we also want to change the smoothing type from spline to linear so the eye doesn't travel at strange speeds across the face. Let's apply this to the right eye. So layer type, we want a gradient. We want blending mode, we want add. We want no influence at this point. Again, we want from minus 0.5 to 0.5. A key at the front, a key at the back linear. Now this side is slightly different in that we still want an alpha, but you see it's traveling back on itself. But if we put a minus one value in here, it travels in the other direction. So as you can see, I've done it on the, just on the X here, but you can go through any of these objects and apply it to the X or the Y should you want to, like I say, force a perspective in any of those directions. That looked simple. What about animating? Let's extend the timeline. Let's say it's 500. Our joystick is selected. We're going to make sure modified is on. And then we're going to quite simply, you could have the audio playing in the background, your soundtrack or however you want to do it. Press play and off you go. Okay, so hit and stop. All I've done literally is just hit the play button and move the null and all that detail is recorded. You'll have your own workflow when it comes to working with keyframes, but I found on some moves, just so selecting them all and moving to stepped can give you quite a nice stop framey type feel. But obviously, tweak away, do whatever you feel works for you. All looks lovely. Now we need to get it into After Effects. 
that's been rendered and as you can see I've been experimenting with the cell shade look which I quite like for this and it also renders very quickly. You've noticed I've turned off a few of the face elements here that's because I'm going to replace those in After Effects. So let's begin with setting that up first. So essentially what's going to happen here is I'm going to replace these items with nulls and send that data through to After Effects. I'm going to show you two ways of doing this, one the manual way, the other the OD Toolkit way. First the manual way, let's create a null and call it AE Lips. We'll take that and we'll parent it to our Lips object and we'll simply move that into place where the lips are but on the face of the head. That's the null for the lips, as you can see that follows along nicely. We'll look at the OD Toolkit way now using Object Placer. I'm going to first create a null and then I'm going to open Object Placer. It can occasionally be a little clunky but it does work well. Now I'm going to select firstly my left ear. Now I've got a feeling I've labelled the ears the wrong way around so that left ear is in fact the right ear. Then I'm going to select the null. Line to poly, I don't need that. I just need to add a null, parent item and leave everything else as is. So I now click on the ear and I've created a null. Now let's go to the right ear which is in fact the left ear so that's my mistake. Let's click on there, there we go. Now I want the eyes, so the eye left, the eye right, there we go and that's basically all we need. A few little tweaks, the nulls will put on the surface of the eye which we don't want, we want to put them on the head. So let's select both of those, move them back slightly and we know the ears are on the surface because we're going to add some earrings so that's correct. So all we need to do now is name these something more descriptive. There you go, I've pretty much named them exactly the same thing, I've just put AE on the front of it. We've made it to After Effects and I've created a comp from our render. A couple of things to point out before we transfer the data. I've got a mouth comp which is a series of 12 images with a little expression on the time remap. Like most expressions, nicked off Creative Cow. <laughs> And all this expression is doing is randomizing between those 12 frames and holding at random points. I've also got an eye comp which I've duplicated twice for obvious reasons. Again with a little expression on it which randomizes the blinking. The next step is very straightforward but we have to do it in two steps as we can't send the camera and all the nulls through at the same time. We have to do them camera first then the nulls or vice versa. Let's select the camera, go to the in out tab and hit send to AE. Now for the nulls, let's select all of these at once. Again hit send to AE. We should notice our null positions are all there. So ear left, ear right, eye right, eye left and our lips. Now we don't actually need to see those so let's just turn them off. Let's move these above the stack and let's get parenting. So the first thing I need to do is turn these into 3D layers. Because our light wave coordinates are sort of based around zero and After Effects isn't, you'll find them sort of way off here, but don't worry about that. So let's begin with the mouth, select the mouth, hold your finger on the shift key, take the pip whip and parent it to the lips. What you should see, we get a massive pair of lips. Let's scale them down to something slightly more reasonable in size. Same again, finger on shift key, take the pip whip and let's call this the eye left. And we'll do the same for the eye right. We'll select them both and we'll scale them together. Hold finger on shift key to constrain the proportions. Now this is where your creative choices come into play. Something like that will do for now. We'll create a couple of earrings, really keep it simple. Just a simple circle, so let's just call it earring. Turn it into a 3D layer, holding shift, pick whip down to the ear left. It should jump into place, obviously it's far too big. So let's squash that down. Duplicate that up and parent that to the ear right. Now if we hit play, we should see an all singing and all dancing talking head. <laughs> So hopefully they're the basics that should get you started. 
perhaps pretty it up a little bit with a few textures in After Effects and a couple of ideal surface maps out of Lightwave. If you wanted to make any changes to the positions, just simply jump back to Lightwave, make your changes and center AE and those changes should be automatically updated. Obviously, if you change the animation on the joystick, you'll need to re-render. So yeah, a little bit specialized this one, but I hope there was something in there of use to you. Thanks for watching. 